I'm back in the forest again today, camouflaged in my sage green jumper. Some might say it's mint green, but to me it's sage, because I think sage is posher than mint. This morning, I've come here looking for some lava. Notably, the species that's at the side of my head. There. Yeah. One of the joys of recording invertebrates and in recording those invertebrates regularly on a single patch or an area is that occasionally new species turn up. And when you have a new species in the form of the majestic purple emperor butterfly, then I know I've featured this species several times before, but it really deserves to be given plenty of coverage. All my life, this butterfly has been a dream, but never dreamt that one day it would be in Nottinghamshire, and that it would increase its range and move into Nottinghamshire. Breeding butterflies years ago in the 1980s when I was young, what I'm filming now to be found in the wild of Nottinghamshire was fictitious it was the stuff of dreams and yet here we are there are now known to be at least five purple emperor larvae that are now in their last instar and reaching quite a size as you can see here at Clipstone quarter i'm going to try and find all five it's a thing to celebrate Success is rarely celebrated. The butterfly in press tend to annually put out releases of doom and gloom. Species decline. When really, that's not the true picture. Not all species are in decline. And here's one that isn't. And here's another purple emperor larva. This one has only recently molted into fifth instar this last couple of days. In fact, the first time I saw this one, it was in the process of actually molting. This is another purple emperor larva which was discovered by Nick and Samantha Brownlee who are doing such marvellous work here on the purple emperor. So this one is quite smaller than the one you've just seen it's got a bit more growing to do to catch up on this is the second of five purple emperor larvae that we know are here there must be more and here's a third this was discovered by nick and samantha brownlee last night or yesterday evening this is Sort of intermediate between the two that you've already seen. So there we are, I've only gone a couple of hundred yards. Three purple emperor larvae already. Now here's a lovely larva that I've just found. This is the larva of copper underwing. Copper underwing is one of two so-called copper underwings. The other being Svensson's copper underwing. The differences between the two are difficult to differentiate and involves looking or examining the hind wings. There's some slight differences in the amount of copper blushing on the hind wings of Svensson's copper underwing. Differentiating the two species is best done here when it's in the larval stage like this. And the differences between the two larvae is that stripe which runs alongside both sides of the larva. In copper underwing, it doesn't, that white stripe doesn't reach the head. There's a gap look before a bright yellow line 
near the head. In Svensson's copper undoing lava, this white line that runs alongside reaches the head. Svensson's copper undoing is rare and I don't know when Nottingham's last acceptable record would be. If people record of lava more often, we may well get to see a true picture of Svensson's copper undoing. I just walked up towards the centre tree and there's a small sallow on the left here that's been eaten by deer at some times and that's kept it small and scrubby. And it's veritably laden with caterpillars of sallow kitten, of which this one is the largest of those we've found. Sallow kitten is very similar and a smaller cousin to the more famous puss moth, whose caterpillar has adorned the old jam jars of many a schoolboy in the 1950s and 60s, long before the days of Google, Facebook and Twitter. It's a nice species to come across. The moth itself is extremely attractive, and I'll drop a photo in somewhere around here. So you can see how well marked a species this is. All the kittens are especially attractive, and the larva equally so. We're now rapidly, too rapidly really for my liking, approaching the end of May. We're well into the last week of May. But as you go through the spring and head quickly towards the summer, more and more feeding signs and leaf mines become available to look for. And one of the easiest and the most commonest to learn and find is this one. This brownish blotch mine formed on the end or any sides of an oak leaf is the leaf mine of Disaria crania superbulella. It's a little moth with a long name. I have featured it before on a couple of the moth trapping videos earlier in the year. Very quickly, almost as soon as the oak leaves open or furl and increase in size and inflate, these leaf mines appear. This one is already vacated, but this is a sign which will last the rest of the year until the leaves drop off in autumn. It's a very common and widespread species. The moth occurs pretty much wherever oak is. Even a single oak tree will undoubtedly have mines of this little moth on. So it's an easy leaf mine to learn. Leaf mines on the whole aren't that difficult. There are some terrific websites available with keys easy to use that will enable you to identify most leaf mines. It's something I wish more people would get into. We always encouraged leaf mines and micromoth activity and recording in Nottinghamshire. Hopefully one day it'll all have paid off and everyone will learn about leaf mines. <laughs>